हाले लुया हाले लुया हाले लुया प्रेज लॉर्ड प्रेज लॉर्ड प्रेज लॉर्ड सो माई ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स माई थीम दैट आई बीन गिवन टू शेयर विथ यू इज गॉडली रिपेंटेंस इन कन्फेशन गॉडली रिपेंटेंस इन कन्फेशन सो दिस टाइम इज अ स्पेशल टाइम इन आर लाइफ इन द चर्च दीज डेज गॉड इज कॉलिंग अस टू मेक अस न्यू इन दिस टाइम ऑफ लेंथ इज इंड इट and in this time of lent something that the church reminds us something that god invites you and me calls us to is for repentance praise the lord praise the lord so you know uh, i have three kids three children two my two elder kids are two lovely boys uh and my youngest is a sweet girl a daughter and she's just turned one few months ago and she's about one plus now and you know that age is where little toddlers or they learn to walk praise the lord so uh, these days she's learning to walk she's not uh, 100% stable still on in her walking so as she walks she so she wants to walk all the time and when she walks i usually hold her hand and i help her to walk because she is not steady but since recently uh, when i offer her my hand she at the same time is also learning words so the word she has learned this days is no and no no so every time i offer my hand when we step out in the garden to walk she says no and she doesn't say it once she'll go on saying it no no and she refuses to take my hand so few days ago you know uh, i was watching her and uh, she started walking i offered my hand she said no but suddenly she lost balance and she fell she fell on the sand on the rock and she hurt herself and there was dust all over her and uh, uh, she was crying and looking at me so i immediately took her up and i hugged her i held her i comforted her cuddled her my brothers and sisters uh, sometimes our lives are also like that as we walk in this journey with god uh, our heavenly father is looking at us isn't it your heavenly father is looking at you and your heavenly father sees each and every one of you as one of his children sons and daughters in the same way we see our children those of you who are parents you know when we see our children especially as they are small you know when my little girl comes and comes near me uh, my heart melts away you know and i immediately take her and keep her on my lap and i forget everything my work my commitments whatever all stress is out of the window because your heart just melts and the lord was reminding me this is the same way i see each and every one of my children even more when the father when the heavenly father looks at you his heart melts away because of his love for you but what happens to us is as we walk in this life things are not stable isn't it there is so much of challenges issues problems things aren't stable so god offers his hand to us if you go to the scripture god reminds us when peter was drowning in the sea who gave his hand to peter jesus so god always offers us his hand and he says my son my daughter you don't have to walk alone in this life but you can hold my hand now there is a reason why my little girl didn't want me to didn't want to hold my hand can you guess why why do you think take a wild guess hmm yeah yeah wants to walk alone but 
the reason was whenever i held a hand as the father as the person far more superior in wisdom than her than a one year old i would know where to lead her where to take her which path in the garden that she will not be able to handle that will be dangerous for her where there could be some wild animal or some snake or a bush or some glass we don't know so i would lead her in a way that i know is good for her but in her little mind that's not where she wanted to go she had her own according to her little understanding she thought no this is where i need to go this is what i need to see so she stopped holding my hand when she realized if i hold my father's hand i can't go where i like to go that's why and that's why she said no my brothers and sisters even in our own life what happens is we say no to the father's hand he offers his hand to you but you say no sometimes you are not conscious sometimes you are not aware that i said no but unconsciously we do and we make decisions without god unconsciously we leave god out of the picture of our lives in our families in our workplaces in my finances in your personal life you know we we do what we want of course we pray to god isn't it we all go we go to kochi kade or we go to st jude or we go somewhere and we tell god lord this is what i want this is what i want to do and you what what bless this plan isn't it let's let's be honest about it isn't it we say lord let bless this looking at all these phases of course i think all are like angels isn't it especially the front row ones you know but that's how we live life and and in a way sometimes it's because we have not learned any other way sometimes it's because that's the way the world works in the world you know uh, i met a father recently he was telling me uh, because he's uh, he was telling me about his children you know he was saying you know in singala eklon thaniyeng deval karanna igena ganno ne podima kaale inda kaurut ne lokunam eglanta tad denno dau karanna he was saying you know my children should learn to do things from their smallest days uh, alone because nobody will be there to help them and i realize he's not saying it out of a place where you want your children to become independent no he's saying it out of a place where he has been led down by people in this world he's telling it out of a place where he doesn't realize there's somebody beyond human people there is a god who loves who's offering his hand why i said that was because sometimes we have a false sense of independence so our independence the world is teaching us that you know you got to do it you got to do it you got to do it and the result is we even unconsciously reject the hand of god in our life and what happens is then we fall we fall just like my little girl you know we fall but the beautiful thing my brothers and sisters is when we fall the father is there exactly where you are to pick you up praise the lord praise the lord can we give the lord a mighty round of applause and say thank you jesus praise you father hallelujah hallelujah he is there because the bible says jesus says in his own words if a earthly father knows how to love you how much more won't your heavenly father so if i know that i have to pick up my little girl how much will our heavenly father want to pick us up want to take us and my brothers and sisters when i picked up my daughter she had a lot of dirt on her because she fell a lot of dirt and she is too small to understand that she didn't have the capacity to get that dirt off her so i had to do it for her i had to wash her hands dust the dirt off her body my brothers and sisters when we fall we also fall into sin and addiction most of the time we fall into sin in our lives because we have not taken god's hand in our life 
if you look if you reflect every time you fell into sin it's because you did not trust god it is because you did not hold on to god every time when you distant yourself from god the result is we fall into sin and we collect dirt we become impure we fall into addiction but the father wants to wipe that dirt off you that's how much he loves you he wants to wipe that dirt off you he wants to clean you and he wants to make you new praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord because only god has the capacity to forgive your sin only he has the capacity you cannot do that by yourself and my brothers and sisters the problem with sin is that it separates you from the father that's the problem when we fall into sin we are separated from the father and the father cannot bear it the father cannot bear it he cannot bear being separated from you and that's why he sent his only son into your life that's why he sent jesus into your life it's an amazing thing my brothers and sisters it's an amazing thing most of us we are not aware because you were created for a relationship you were created by god to have a relationship with the father to have a relationship with jesus to have a relationship with the holy spirit but we are not aware we think we were created we were made just to live you know study get a job get a good career build a beautiful house get a good vehicle grow old have a family have children have a good marriage earn your money build your wealth and grow old and die no my brothers and sisters there is something more to life and that something more to life is god has created you to have this relationship with him and he calls out to you my son my daughter my children i am here you have a loving father praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord so my brothers and sisters jesus especially during this time of lent that's what we reflect jesus has been sent to pay the price for your sin and mine to pay the debt that we have to pay that price that is on our heads but my brothers and sisters the problem is do we apply that to our life you know god has written the check for your debt with the life of jesus god has given you the payment for your debt of sin but the question is have we cashed that check have we banked that check my brothers and sisters this is what confession is this is what the sacrament of confession is you know today we live in a time where so many say because we live in the midst of so many other denominations other churches other christian sects today we live in a time when we are told you know you don't have to go to confession you don't have to go to a priest to confess your sins you have a relationship with god i am with so many who say you know i have a relationship with god i will confess my sin directly to god but my brothers and sisters this sacrament of confession is a gift god has given us it's a gift that we can cash our checks where you can take that check god has given and you can bank it and when you go to confession you receive that mercy you receive that forgiveness and you are set free from that sin and addiction that you are experiencing not only that you are again connected to the father you are again able to have that relationship experience that love of the father 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's look at John chapter 20 verse 21. John chapter 20 verse 21. Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them. So this is a risen Jesus raised from the dead. Who is breathing the Holy Spirit on whom? On whom? On the apostles. And he's sending them, commissioning them. He anoints them with the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus says, If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My brothers and sisters, this is the power and the authority God has given priests in the sacrament of confession. Because the successors of these apostles are the bishops and then the priests who are there with us today in the church. So today, why I, uh, the Lord really reminded me to share this with you. The reason is because we live in a world today where we really think that we don't have to go for confession. That you can directly repent to God. But my brothers and sisters, in this sacrament is where you can meet the Father's embrace. In this sacrament is where the father wants to hold you. The father wants to pick you up from the ground and clean away the dirt, the sin, the darkness in your life. And he not only frees you, but you're able to have a relationship and experience his presence in a powerful way. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The best example we can see is the life of David in the Old Testament. You know, uh, if, you, if I remind you about David, what was some, a trademark in his youth? What was the trademark in his relationship with God? What do you think? What was the specialty in his youth? He's known as, uh, what, a man? Pardon? Yes, a man who's after God's heart, isn't it? And from his smallest days, he had this relationship with God. He had a heart-to-heart -heart connection with God. You know, he didn't have a disconnection. He had a connection. He had an intimacy. He had a relationship with God. And that's what God is calling you and I for, my brothers and sisters. God is calling you to have that intimacy. That relationship with him. That's why we do Lent. Lent is not just to be limited to external exercises of fasting and all these things. Just uh, going to church and doing all the external rituals. No, Lent is the father calling back his children. The children who have said no to holding his hand. The children who have gone astray on their own whims and fancies and paths and have fallen now. In crisis, in their families, in their relationships, in their finances, in their life. Fallen into addiction and sin. But the father is calling you now. Come, come, return to me. And that's why repentance is returning to the father. So we return in this time of Lent. We return, we hear that invitation. And David had such a relationship with God. But what happened, my brothers and sisters, as he was anointed king and as he became king, that place where God had in his heart, that love, that intimacy, that affair David had with God, that relationship changed. And David fell into the sin of lust. That place where God had in his heart, he gave it over to the pleasures of his body. And he fell 
into adultery he fell into grave sin and it cut him from that relationship with god and you see it if you read the old testament you see crisis after crisis how he lost his children the way his family fought the way one brother killed another brother it's all there why because he lost that relationship with god he said no to the father's hand and he went his way not only did he fall his family fell but my brothers and sisters what happens he not only committed adultery he ended up killing a person he ended up a murderer can you see the man that scripture said is the man after god's own heart ultimately fell into murder my brothers and sisters that's the danger if we do not repent that's the danger if we do not go to god if we do not go and go into confession if we do not allow god to hold us in confession if we don't allow god to clean us in confession our sin has a way of multiplying itself and it takes us from darkness to darkness until our entire life is destroyed and we can lose our soul and be separated from god for all eternity praise the lord praise the lord let's go to psalm 51 verse 10 psalm 51 verse 10 my brothers and sisters uh, david finally repented he finally repented but why did he repent and that's what, what i want you to see why did he repent so you can read with me this is david's struggle and david's prayer in the psalms with the lord create in me a pure heart o oh god and renew a steadfast spirit within me do not cast me from your presence or take your holy spirit from me do not cast me from your presence or take your holy spirit from me my brothers and sisters david repented because he knew the the beauty of that relationship he had with god because david knew that satisfaction that happiness that love that intimacy that he experienced in that relationship with god he realized that nothing could fill that nothing could replace that not the adultery not the killing of another person nothing and when he realized it when he realized that even after all this addiction and sin and lust when he realized that he was still empty that he was still unhappy he realized what he had lost in god and that's why the psalmist says if you can put that again that's why the psalmist says that's why david says do not cast me from your presence he was not just confessing so that he can get the next good blessing the next good house the next good career the next good job no he was confessing he was repenting because he wanted god back in his life because he wanted that relationship back in his life my brothers and sisters this is what godly repentance is godly repentance is we come before god not because we are afraid of god not because if we don't repent we will not receive these material blessings from god it's not because you know if i don't repent you know i will go to hell and i'll be you know tortured by the demons no i repent from a place because i know oh lord i have lost your presence oh lord i have lost that intimacy with you oh lord i want that love that companionship that i experienced long time ago lord i want that connection back with you there were days when you had the lord in your life when you were connected to him you had peace no matter what problem crisis came in your life you had that peace you had that steadfastness in your heart but if you have lost that today my brothers and sisters today if you are stressed if you are suffering from anxiety 
today if your problem your crisis your sin has overwhelmed you it's because somewhere inside of your heart you have not taken his hand it is because you have said no to his hand and you have gone your own way and you have got lost like that prodigal son that prodigal son who did not want to take the father's hand and he said i'll go my way you give me what i need and what i you owe me but still jesus says in luke chapter 15 that father waits till he returns that father waits till he returns and when he returns when that son realizes my path my choices what i thought would be true and good for my life when he realized it was all a failure he came back and that father waiting jesus says when he saw that son he ran to that son he ran because god runs to you my brothers and sisters why does god run because you are his son because you are his daughter why did i run to my child why did i pick her up soon as she fell because that's the love god has for each and every one of us so jesus says he runs to that prodigal son and he holds him and he hugs him that is confession my brothers and sisters confession is where your father runs to you we are afraid to go to confession isn't it yes or no we are afraid oh i know the priest i know him well you know i'm the biggest donor to my parish how can i go and say this to him he will lose all respect for me he will lose all regard for me what would he think but confession is the father who's running to you and through that priest is jesus through that priest is the father waiting to embrace you waiting to hold you you know i i still remember the moment uh, i went for confession once and to a priest that i knew and i really didn't want to go first because i thought you know what would he think of me you know uh but i went and after my confession that priest did something that i have never experienced before he got up he stood up and he came and he gave me a hug my brothers and sisters i still remember when that happened when he gave me that hug i felt the father's love in that moment and it completely set free my heart from my sin from my brokenness and i experienced a love of the father i forgot i forgot that this was a priest i forgot that this was a human being i experienced the father's love that is what confession is my brothers and sisters don't go and scold your priest now that he did not hug you, <laughs> you know. but that's what's happening in the spiritual realm sacraments are only a symbol of the unseen they are only signs of spiritual realities so the father is hugging you my brother and sister and you can experience that love that purity and what did that father do in that with the prodigal son he gave new clothes he took away those old dirt imagine how dirty he would have been in that pig sty Imagine how smelly he would have been but he cleaned him up he washed him he gave new clothes and he reminded him you are my son and that's what god does in confession to you when that priest absolves you of your sin the father is telling you don't you know you are my son don't you know you are my daughter you are a child of god praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord so my brothers and sisters we learn from david we go to confession not because we are afraid not because we might not get the next blessing god is trying to give us and we are trying to appease god we are trying to please him no we go from a place where we want him back in our life of course when we have him back in our life he will add everything else that you need every need will be provided but it is getting connected back to him this is 
godly repentance. We go crying out for him like David. Oh Lord, don't take your presence away from my life, my family, my relationships, my home. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to finish with a testimony. You know, I met a person who told me about uh, a sin, an addiction he was struggling with. And he was struggling with this addiction. He was struggling with this sin. But he used to go for prayer meetings. He used to go uh, praise and worship. He used to do all these things. He had a very good prayer life, personal prayer life. But he could not break from this sin. He could not break from this addiction. So he used to repent in his personal prayer. He used to repent directly to God. And for a few days he'll be okay. But he could for years never come out of this addiction. He loved God. And he was telling me, you know, I, feel, I felt so bad. I felt so guilty. How can I let down my God? But he says that he, he, uh, the Lord showed him that he needed to go for confession. And he went to confession. He was absolved by the priest. Few months later, he fell into the same sin, same thing. He again went to confession. Again, after a few weeks, he fell into that same weakness. And then he could not go back to confession. He was telling me, I thought, you know, no point. I'm going to confession. I'm asking the Lord to forgive me. I'm receiving that and I go back and fall. And as he was praying, he says, the Lord told him, you continue to go to confession. No matter what. And he was telling me he struggled. You know, I thought the priest might scold me. I thought the priest might, you know, uh, rebuke me. But he said, no, the priest did not do such thing. Every time I went to confession, when I fell into that, I went. And today, he's completely free from that addiction. Let's give the Lord a mighty applause and say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. My brothers and sisters, you don't have to struggle with your sin, your addiction alone. If gossiping is your problem, if a bad mouth is your problem, if alcohol is your issue, you're addicted, if pornography is your issue, whatever the issue, you continue to go to confession. And as you obey God's word, that in the sacrament, God will free you, God will redeem you, God will clean you up. As you have faith in that, not on yourself. Don't have faith in yourself that you have to get out of it. No, yes, you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision that you won't fall into this again. But you depend on God. And you believe in faith that he is releasing you with his power. And you will see the glory of God in your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So shall we just stand up for a moment to pray? And be in his presence for a few minutes. No. My brothers and sisters, as we gather in his presence, in a little while, we'll be before the Blessed Sacrament. And we'll be in adoration before our Jesus, before the Father. So let's open our hearts right now. As the Lord is in our midst, let's open our hearts to the Lord and let's tell the Lord, Lord, give me your grace. Give me the grace, Lord, to fully open my heart to you today, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord.
your prayer this evening. Make every word your prayer, my brothers and sisters. to the Lord. Open your hearts, my brothers and sisters, to he who loves us, to he who we cry out, Abba Father. Let's worship in the spirit. brothers and sisters just feel his embrace just experience his love that is moving amongst us right now it's truly his presence it's truly his love it's truly his embrace Lord we pray this evening that we receive your grace, the grace to bring the filth of our lives, the grace to bring the dirt of our lives, 
the grace to bring the darkness that no man knows about our lives to you lord jesus to you father in this time to bring it to you because you won't reject us lord you won't hate us lord you won't tell on us lord but you will forgive us lord because it is your heart to unite every person lost every son every daughter every child that was once lost to unite each and every one back to you oh lord jesus back to you oh father and because you are doing that right now lord because you are going to do that in the next few minutes lord we want to say thank you jesus Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you Father. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you Father. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you Father. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please be seated.